Well, finally, finally, we get to start putting some images into InDesign. It's very simple to do, but it is definitely different than Illustrator. So uh, pay attention, here we go. Sir, yes, sir! Uh, actually, this is a little awkward. I'm gonna draw a rectangle before we place any pictures because I wanna talk about the different types of frames there are. So to draw a rectangle, it is just like Illustrator. Here is the rectangle shape tool. And then I want to have a pink background on this layout I'm gonna be doing. So I'm gonna draw that, but that pink background is too dark. So I'm gonna choose this one, beautiful. And uh, you'll notice that this box I drew uh, looks like it would in Illustrator. It's got the bounding box and I can resize it the same way. But in essence, that is a frame. Um, remember I told you everything has to be contained within a box, even a box you draw. Uh, but if I go to the object menu and I pull down to content, this shows you the three basic types of frames or boxes you can have. I just drew that rectangle that considers it an unassigned box, meaning it doesn't have a specific task. But you'll notice here is a text box, here is a graphic box, which is what will be created when we import a picture. And you have the ability to change any box you have to a different kind of box by coming to this menu. I'm gonna leave this unassigned. And now what I'd like to do is go ahead and uh, place an image. Now I want you to notice that this box is still active. If I place an image while this box is active, it will actually put the image inside of that box. So. Sometimes you're gonna to want to do that, but a lot of times you aren't. So always make sure that you get your black arrow tool and you click away from anything that's marked to unmark it. What? Then I'm gonna to go to the file menu and I'm gonna pull down to place. And then I can navigate to the image I would like to insert. So I'm going to insert a PSD file called Wilbur. You recognize this bad boy. And I'm gonna click open. Now, if I click inside of this box, guess what's gonna happen? <laughs> yes, it puts it inside of that box. So after I went to all that trouble to unmark the box, it happened anyway. Fortunately, I'm a professional. I do not panic, or I edit the tape if I do. And so I'm gonna undo that, Command Z. It will give me back my loaded icon. And this time I'm gonna make sure to click outside of that box. And then it gives it to me in its own box. So, so here is my picture in its picture box. And you'll notice it looks the same as any other box, except that this is not a bounding box. And you'll see that it's not a bounding box if you grab one of the handles and drag it. <laughs> And you'll realize it doesn't resize the picture at all. It actually crops it. And so that's the benefit of having this in its own box is that you have the ability to very easily crop any image which you import. So I'm going to undo that because I really don't want to crop this. But then the question I'm sure is at the very top of your head, well, then how the hell do I resize the picture? I and don't know. Truly, that is a very fine question. Um, you need to get a different tool. And so in Photoshop, you've probably used the free transform tool. Well, guess what? InDesign has one as well. It is right here. So if I click on this, or I can just hit the letter E, and now when I grab a handle, it will resize the image. Now, I committed a cardinal sin there. I did not hold the shift key, so I will do this again. And so click, hold down the shift key, and then I can drag this and resize it any way I want. And so again, as with the text tool, if you click and hold for a minute before you start dragging, then you will get that real-time preview, which I think is really nice. Yes, dear. Okay, so there is Wilbur jumping up in the air. So again, this is a PSD file. I could import TIFFs, I can import JPEGs, I can import PNGs. But what's important to know is that anytime you're working in any of the Adobe programs, 
keep saving it in the native file format because that will maintain all of your options for going back and editing the image. So I always make a point of not converting an image to anything but native file format unless I have a specific reason to do so. Okay, so let's do another one here. So again, I'm gonna get my black arrow tool, make sure nothing is marked, and I'm gonna to switch to preview mode so I can get rid of those lines and boxes when I don't need them. And then I'm going to place once again. So keystroke for this is Command D. And then I have another PSD file in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. And so there is Wilbur as a real pig, the real Wilbur. And so I'm gonna resize him, make him a little smaller. Uh, but before I do, you can probably notice this on the screen. It's not as obvious with the uh, illustration back here, but this really doesn't look that good. It's giving me what's called a low res preview of the image or display of the image. So let me show you how you can change that. If you go up to the view menu, you will find that there is something called display performance. And the default right now is set to typical display, which is a reasonable quality. You can see very well what's going on, but it's not the best quality. I always like to work with the best quality. The only reason not to is if you have an older computer and, and if showing high quality may slow it down. But at school anyway, you have very good computers, so definitely choose high quality. I'm gonna choose that, and I don't know how well you see that in the movie, but it is definitely a much cleaner, well-rendered image. If you would like to change it so that this is always high quality display, you can go to the preferences menu, which is under the InDesign menu, or I believe it's under the file menu if you're on a PC. Go to preferences and then pull down to display performance. And then I can just change the default view to always be high quality and then I don't have to mess with that again. Okay, so now let's resize Wilbur. I got the free transform tool, so holding the shift key. And I'm just gonna put him down here in the corner. Okay, so there is one more image to place, which is an Illustrator document. So again, just save it as an Illustrator document and you can place it in InDesign, no problem. So back here to place. And there is my AI file. And look at that, I made the mistake. I had a box marked when I went to place this. So I'm gonna undo that, Command Z. I'm going to come over here and I'm gonna click away from that box. And then I can go in and I can grab this stamp. Now what's nice is you can see this image needs to be, get rid of some of that extra space around the graphic that um, we don't need. And so this is a really nice way of using the frame just to minimize the real estate it takes on the screen. And then I'm gonna get my free transform tool again. And uh, the size is okay, I may resize it a little bit, but you'll notice that it really does work just like a bounding box now. So if I get close to the handle, I get the little rotate icon and I can go in and I can rotate this a little bit because aren't these kinds of stamps always rotated? Totally, for and sure. Pull that up into position and then I'm gonna get my free transform again, hold the shift key, and I think I will make that a little bit smaller. And then I think I'd like real Wilbur to be a little bit bigger. Oh, say magnifique. Go on, say it. Um, I wanna talk about stacking order as well in here. So let's say for instance, I'm gonna delete this background box for a minute. So let's say I get to this point and I realize, oh, I forgot to put the background in. Well, then I can go grab my rectangle tool and I can draw said rectangle. And there's only one problem besides the color being not right. It's everything disappeared. Now again, I don't panic, I'm a professional. So I'm gonna go up to the object menu and just like an illustrator, I'm gonna go to arrange and I can send to back. 
And then I need to make the color right because fake Wilbur, I can't see. So I'm gonna go to swatches, make that be the light pink. And suddenly life is a blooming rose. Okay, so that's it for the fun part. The next video, I'll talk about the less fun part, but one you really need to understand, and that is image links. How do image links work, and why do you need to understand how they work? Oh, man!